Reading to all, Dr. X here. Good to see you. All right. Today's lecture is for those of you that are reading Richard Johnson's article, What is Cultural Studies Anyway? So I want to summarize a few key points from the article as you continue to do your research into cultural studies. Stay tuned. Here are the citations and where you can find the article. So if you haven't already downloaded it from your course shell, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, you can go on Google and find uh, the articles there. Now, if you haven't already read it, I'd encourage you to do so as soon as possible after you watch this video, okay? That way it'll be easier for you to understand the concepts I'll be talking about in today's video. So there are three main models of cultural studies research that Johnson discusses in his article. There's production-based studies, text-based studies, and the studies of lived cultures. In the article, Johnson discusses each form of research, and then he goes into a critical analysis, giving us both the strengths and the weaknesses of each approach. Now, let me stop here and mention the importance of self-critique within the field because I think that Johnson does a really great job of talking about how it's so important for those of us in the field to be open to um, self-analysis, to self-critique, to looking for constructive feedback. And I actually think he offers this in his article. He offers constructive feedback and critique about the field as a whole. So as you read the article, you'll see that uh, he emphasizes in his analysis a way to evaluate and reflect on our practices within the field constructively. Now, like Johnson, I agree with him that we should be conscientious about our practices and we should ongoingly assess them um, as we are doing our research, as we're building the field. That way, we do not assume that we've made progress to a point where it's not necessary for us to evaluate our own practices uh, within the field. So I agree with Johnson, and you'll notice a lot of his critical reflection throughout the article. All right, let's start with production-based studies. So production-based or production-related studies are about struggling to control and transform the most powerful means of cultural production. So we're either changing it, seeking to change it, or we're looking for an alter alternate or alternative means to pursue a counter hegemonic strategy. Now, these discourses are usually addressed, according to Johnson, to institutional reformers or to radical political parties. Next up is text based studies or text based research. So text-based studies focus on the forms of cultural products, and they seek to transform cultural practices. He says that these are most often addressed to avant-garde practitioners, to critics, and to teachers. These approaches were appealed especially to professional educators, like college professors, university professors, and K through 12 educators because, and I'll quote him here, knowledges appropriate to radical practice have been adapted, not without problems, to a knowledge appropriate to critical readers. And so text-based uh, research and studies you'll mostly see with teachers and educators. Finally, Johnson talks about research into lived cultures. Now, this form of research and study is closely associated with the politics around representation and margin marginalization. Uh, the focus is on understanding the lived experience of those people who have been marginalized or those social groups that have been subordinated. And then criticizing the dominant public forms in light of hidden wisdoms. Now, such work may even aspire to help to give hegemonic or non-corporate turn to cultures that are usually privatized, stigmatized, or silenced, according to Johnson. Now, Johnson argues that each one of these 
um, has their value as individual research frameworks, but he presents a critical examination of each, giving us both the strengths and the weaknesses for all of the approaches. But ultimately, here's what he points to. He points to the need for us to use all three when appropriate. And then at the end of the article, article, he presents predictions that there will not only be theoretical developments within the field, but political alliances that develop as well. So all that intersectional work leads to political alliances as well as theoretical gains. Now, here we are, 2024 is when I'm recording this lecture, and I would say, yes, he got it right. It, it, all you have to do is look at all of the interdisciplinary studies that are out there now, um, doing intersectional work and doing research at those intersections um, between sex and gender, between religion and income, between age and sexual identity. Like, there's all of this research being done, and I would say that it's uh, cultural studies can we can look and see a significant impact that it had on the development of fields like women's studies, like Africana studies, um, and how cultural studies was influenced by those fields of study as well. So yeah, I agree with him with his prediction all those decades ago um, that there would it would influence culture and culture would influence it. So cultural studies is all about a movement and a network. At the time he wrote it, Johnson argued that cultural studies was progressing from just being meager beginnings to a field that was actually influencing academic disciplines. Not only was it a field itself, but it was also interdisciplinary in the way in which it could be used in multiple fields of study. It could also be used as a research methodology, a theoretical framework for people working in multiple disciplines as they did their research. So it was, he argues that it was more than just about that field itself. It was about building movements. It was about building networks. And it was about the interdisciplinary nature of work in cultural studies. Now, as evidence, he named a few of the academic disciplines that were influenced by the embracing of cultural studies. And he talked specifically about English studies, about sociology, about media and communication studies. And then later on, he would also go ahead and mention linguistics, history. Um, and, it, and I would point you again to the interdisciplinary um, studies like women's studies, like gender and sexuality studies, um, as other places that we can see the, the field of cultural studies and the tool of cultural studies as a theoretical framework, an investigative lens uh, made a difference for lots of researchers across multiple disciplines. All right, so those of you in my class know I've already done a lecture on the components of culture. I'll leave a link above, um, or I'll put one below in the description below where you can find that lecture. I just wanted to remind you that culture isn't just one thing. So as I go through the rest of this lecture and show you a couple of more things, a uh, couple of more key concepts that Johnson uh, comes out of the Johnson article, I want you to keep in mind that culture isn't just one thing. It's not culture um, in a vacuum by itself. So as this graphic shows, it had it's made up of so many uh, different principles and concepts. Now, again, keep those in mind as I talk about a few of the key takeaways I'll share with you in the next couple of slides. One of the key points from this article is that Johnson makes the case that culture or cultural processes are closely connected to social relations. So in other words, Cultural process can be seen both as a creator and an influencer. Now, this is especially true when it comes to cultural contexts like class relations, gender and sexuality divisions, and racial structuring or social stratification. And culture involves power. 
and it helps to produce asymmetries. This is part of his argument that culture involves power and helps to create those asymmetries in the abilities of individuals and social groups to define and realize their needs. Now, I've already talked about poverty in that in that lecture I gave, actually a couple of lectures about power and poverty. I'll just leave you a link for the playlist. Let me just say it that way, okay? Now, um, I've already talked about that and how it fits with the needs in society when it comes to social stratification. Johnson is talking about cultural structures being one of the ways we engage in conversations about power. Now, there is no real cultural studies without understanding the role of power, even in our eventual or our, our evaluation of literary works. We have to understand that there are power dynamics and power must become part of the conversation when we're delving into all three of those areas of research within cultural studies. So part of what we look at in cultural studies is meaning making. Cultural studies looks at how people make meaning through things like art and books and music and movies and television, right? And so it also looks at how these things can be used to express power and control. So for example, a cultural studies scholar might ask the following questions in their research. They might ask a question about how does a particular movie represent race or gender? Um, how do television shows promote the values of one group of people over another? How do television shows promote the values and beliefs, let's say, of one racial or ethnic group over another? How does a book reflect the power dynamics of a society at any given point in history? Again, cultural studies is not just about a study of processes. It's a study of meaning making. Now, here are a couple of final things I'd like you to remember as key things um, from the article. First of all, cultural studies looks at subjectivity. So he talks about that in the article. It looks at subjectivity from a perspective of its pressures and tendencies, he says, especially its contradictory sides. So remember, it's about subjectivity. In cultural studies, texts are not studied just for studying texts sake, right? It's not for their own sake. Instead, it's a means for us to understand the subjective or cultural forms they produce. So we don't just study text just to study text. We're studying them to understand both their subjectivity and the cultural forms that they produce in society. And finally, cultural studies gives us insight into to the ways our lives are shaped by culture. It also gives us insight into the ways we shape culture. And those outcomes that come from cultural change can assist us in creating a much more just and equitable society. Okay, that is it for today's lecture about what is cultural studies anyway, right, from <laughs> Johnson. So, if you have questions about anything I've covered in this lecture, please be sure to leave those below. Um, I will respond to them as quickly as I can. Hey, thanks so much for watching today's video. I appreciate you engaging with the content here on The Woman is Scholar. Now, if you haven't already done so, please feel free to click the like button and also think about subscribing. That way you'll be notified whenever another video like this one comes out. Thanks so much for watching and have a terrific day.